okay here's another one it says pulse not working well what is pulse well we'll we'll figure it out i can't log into pulse I, I get password invalid okay we're going to get to that again i'm going to sign ticket to myself make sure i get credit for it so in this case pulse is actually a vpn it's called pulse secure but any vpn software will be something you deal with the same way because this example is specifically so that way we can talk about pulse uh, i'm sorry that we can talk about vpn but vpn software is very similar in in many ways i have a video uh, that if you want to check out i'm going to make it pop up on the right top hand corner on why you don't actually need a vpn as a normal person working from home like on your personal computer so if you want to go check that out video, I highly suggest it for people who are going to get into help desk or want to start in help desk because it, it explains VPN a lot further, a lot further. However, businesses do need VPN. Uh, so that way you can connect. VPN allows you to connect to the company's network so you can access the company's resources like their internal websites, their internal storages, internal um, internal uh anything internal network everything that's companies internal related you need a vpn and vpn basically creates a connection like a tunnel a road if you will that allows you to basically go in there and access whatever it is that you need all right so in this case again this is especially nowadays people working from home this is going to be a very common issue that comes up pulse not working I can't log in, I get password invalid. 99% uh, of the time, this issue is with the user not knowing how to, not knowing how to log in properly. Because there's a, there's a method to it. There is a method to it. Um, so, the, and I'll explain to you what that is on how to make sure that user, um, the user can log in properly and that they make sure that they don't have this problem in the future okay so the main um, issue here is the password is invalid so we know they're not doing it right well how do i know it's not a connection issue because whenever they connect whenever they open up a vpn whenever they open up vpn software let's let's find an example of how this looks like pulse secure VPN whenever they open up whenever they open up a connection to connect to here we'll use this one here yeah let's use this one because I don't feel like spending too much time going into this so it, this image a little bit blurry I apologize I this is just what I found on the internet but this is kind of what it looks like uh, let me try this one here uh, this one's a little bit better so whenever they open up Pulse Secure VPN software, they get a list of servers and they can choose one to connect to. There might be one, there might be multiple ones. If it's a big company, they'll have multiple ones, you know, because you want to reduce the latency as much as possible. So if you have one in New York, one in Missouri, uh, one in California, one in Texas, that makes sense, you know, or like one in Australia, one in India, one in China, I don't know. Um, so you want to connect the one that's closest to you, but that's not the problem here. So you would see the list of the servers and you select it and you click connect. Now this image showed that somebody's already connected, but whenever you click connect, uh, you get a pop-up asking you to log in. And the reason there is, this is not a connection issue is because user said the password is invalid. They would not even get to a point where they can see the working servers there. They wouldn't be able to connect, I should say, not connect, but uh, try to connect to a server because uh, there, there would be no connection whatsoever. Their network, their, their internet, local internet would not be working. Internet, if they're working from home, trying to connect to the company's servers, company's network, in which case, when they do succeed, it would create a virtual private network, which would inherently means in, it's going to inherit. Once it's connected, it's going to inherit the network 
local network of the company okay so you're once you do that your computer at home essentially is going to be the same thing as if you were sitting at the office at the company's business okay so now we know that there is internet the internet is weird because they got a specific error it's val invalid password that means it tried to connect to the server but the invalid password is a clear uh clear sign that the server rejected their password okay so there's no connection issue it's just a password issue okay so now we need to guide them to make sure that they're doing it properly now let me see here I'm, i want to get to a login uh here we go so whenever they select to log in on one of the servers in this case pulse so they would click on the server and they would get this pop-up and then they log in but we're going to use this one here for an example because it's it's kind of filled out for you now the way pulse is set up and probably a lot of a lot of other vpns that uh, that connect to a business used by a business is that that whenever they get a login pop-up after they select to connect to a server the first top first part of it is always going to be their username which is their login id probably for their domain or the same thing as their computer remember on the first ticket we talked about a computer so the same login that you use for your computer it's most likely going to be that it would not make any sense to make it anything else because that would just make more passwords make more logins make more passwords make it more complicated so um, a high chance that it's going to be the same thing as their computer login id okay so this is what's filled out here and then for specifically for pulse and some other vpns uh, will set it up in, in in such way where you are required to type in a password that you get for that which a lot of times is just a bunch of numbers right so you get your vpn password however after this you see where this ended right here chances are you are required to add add a token number a secure uh, token id number so what that is is just a randomly generated code that authenticates the connection so in addition to your password after that they have to enter their duo or I should say duo duo is one of the apps that you can use to generate a random code uh, but a lot of companies can create a token that generates a random code and I'll show you this uh, but you have to add that afterwards and then select connect okay so you got to know make sure you familiarize yourself exactly so if you start help desk and you know VPN is some of the things you will come up make sure you understand how VPN is connected so that way you can be a professional and professionally guide whoever it is that need help logging in so chances are this is the issue where they can't log in however there might be something else related for example their account needs to be adjusted this and that and you can certainly go in and check these settings if allowed otherwise user may have to go in there and themselves to um you know activate the account if it's you know i mean different things can happen but in this case we're specifically talking about not knowing how to log in because that's the case 99 percent of the time there's a small chance that their uh, domain password their computer password has expired which would reject the connection as well so they might be doing this correctly they might be doing this correctly but if the their domain account is locked out meaning their account has expired it will lock out their account and they, their connection will get rejected so make sure you check their domain password and account it's what we literally just talked about in the first ticket you see how i'm combining these two so that way you guys can understand make sure you check that first as well uh, while agent or agent or user is trying to connect using vpn because that could be a problem too Okay, now let me show you Duo token. Let's do Duo token. Why not? Let's do an example. Here it is, Duo. 
Um, you can get an app on your phone as well, but it's simply this. Here are the randomly generated number. This is a poor example because it shows one, two, three, four, five, six, but it's more like this. You know, you just press it, you press this button, and it generates a random number like so. 728292. This is what they need to type in after their password, after they type in their password inside of uh, for the for the VPN. So again. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reiterate this again because I know I'm, I'm teaching people who are new to help desk. So they would put in their regular password and then after that, they put in that code from the Duo token. All right. I'm going to leave it at that. I think that's good. Okay. I apologize. We should have contacted the customer, but I did all this assuming we we're talking to the customer on the phone. Okay. So I'm a, I did all of this assuming that we are talking to the customer on the phone. Okay, so I'm gonna add an internal note. I'm going to say assisted, let's say customer this time with pulse login. You can just leave it at that. Uh, you can specify what you did and some companies that you work for may want you to do that uh, and that's fine. So after this, you can say, I don't know, the issue was with, I don't know. I, I mean, in, in this case, you know, if, if they just needed help logging in, then we help them and show them how to log in. Uh, you can say, if you really want, you can say this, this was a training issue. You, if you, you can really, you can say this uh, because if, if they were supposed to be trained better, especially if they're new, if it's a new user, new agent, whatever it is, whoever it is, um, you can say that it's a training issue. Uh, but if this is a manager, don't do this because I don't want you to get in trouble. But if it's if you know for sure it's just a user that's new to the company, if they say I'm new, I don't know, you can say it's a training issue so they can go back and train them again, make sure that they know how to do this properly. Although you just did it. But if it's a repeat customer, uh, let's just say that if it's a repeat user repeat customer if you will say that it's a training issue otherwise if you want to specify if it's something else you can for example account was locked you can do that whatever it is that happened just make sure it's noted and then close the ticket